All right, June. For today's lesson, we have music discs and we have cactuses. So the cactus is came from the desert that I went to last time. It was a fun adventure. I got some great stuff. And I mean, the music desk I've had, but check it out. It's music. Maybe I should get some more toys in here. Hello, current friends and future friends alike. My name is Marchillin, you can call me March, and welcome to another episode of my survival world of Minecraft, where I'm trying to get every advancement, uh, but also having fun and doing everything that Minecraft has to offer along the way. Cool. Well, I have I got some updates for you, starting with just up that hill. So we're going to get into that in just a second. And I think to do that, the best way to show you what I've been working on is actually to go backward into the past. I thought it would be more of a cool juxtaposition to show off what things used to look like before showing you what they look like now. This is an older version of my map. I'm in creative mode and it's from the time before I built the cafe. The golems still spin out. They still do the spinnies. We have our house for May here, um, you know, looking fine, whatever. It was serviceable, it worked, but I felt like she needed a bit of an upgrade and we'll get into that in a second. And I haven't done too much with April and August house, but you'll see. So anyway, I just wanted to show this off real fast. This is what it looked like. And let's actually end right here and pick back up in my current version of my map. Here we are, in my current version. Look how much different this place looks, just from this one viewpoint alone. We have our really cool tree, um, we have these like nice hanging lights that I was working on. I actually kind of want to put some more up, but over time. Um, we have a nice like, bell centerpiece, and look at May's house. Still the same courtyard setup, not a lot has changed here. But look at this upgraded shop front that I'm working on. It still needs a bit of work, it still needs some decoration, but this is a major improvement for her house. Um, and I think May agrees, right? Um, we'll just pop into her room for a second, and we still have our lovely flowers, now with some tools. Um, we have our bed, and also, let's not forget, like, I replaced the roof. I have, I guess, upgraded from the moss blocks, to just like full on copper. And yep, for their house, I did the whole beeswax thing again. It took forever. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. I was actually, and I've been working on this little stone wall project. I'll get into that later. I was actually um, thinking about just letting them fully oxidize, like I've done with the improved roof for April and August house. However, um, I really wanted sort of a color variation, like a contrast, uh, it would have blended together just a little too much if it was the same, like, oxidation level. Or at least that's how I felt. So, um, April and August house haven't gotten, like, a huge renovation on the inside just yet, but they do have a brand new roof. Um, it's very interesting. It's got a lot going on. And they've got, like, a chimney now, which is great. Because, um, like, that really does breathe life into these buildings. So that's what I've been working on here, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm really happy with how this has turned out so far, and I'm going to continue to work on it over time. Um, what else have I worked on? I think the only other major thing I did was I built this cactus farm over here at Spawn. It's not, like, super impressive or anything. It's not... It's, it's a cactus farm. Uh, it's a pretty standard design as far as cactus farms go. But it's allowing me to get plenty of cactuses so I can have all the green dye that I could want. All the green dye that I could want. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a feeling that when I updated my Optifine, it has done the thing again where it's not updating. It's fine. <laughs> uh, nope. Not Optifine. My problem. Uh, turns out cactuses don't grow. And most crops don't grow, even if they're in the spawn chunks, unless the player's nearby. So, 
I guess I'm gonna spend a lot of AFK sessions here for a while. But that's a problem for future March. Hello everyone, and I'm blindsiding you all with a segment of March's Kitchen Corner at the very beginning of the episode rather than at the end of the episode. Variety is the spice of life, so they say, so let's put that principle into action. Okay, March's Kitchen Corner. It's a segment where we are trying to eat all the foods that Minecraft has to offer, even if they're not very good for us, so we can make our way to the advancement. A balanced diet. Okay, with that said, let's see what our first food of the day is. Beetroot. Not even hungry. Forgot how this works. All right, easy peasy. Next food. Mushroom stew. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. I usually like just like looking at mushrooms. Once in a while I'll eat them. Okay, last food of the day. A cookie. Oh, that's fun. I don't remember how to make these at all. I think it involves milk, wheat, maybe, but sugar. Dear crafting bench, how do you make a cookie? I was so far off. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna do it for me in March's Kitchen Corner. Thanks for joining us in the, the rare beginning of the episode segment. Like, that's new. Let's move on to the rest of the episode. So I have like two main objectives for today's episode. The first is redstone related because I've been thinking about this project for a while and I would love to get it done. Last episode, I talked a little bit about this tree and the fact that this uh, tree block lines up perfectly with the chimney down in my house. And so it's going to be a really cool idea to put a secret passage between the two where I can just like hop back and forth. I don't have to like run through my garden and accidentally trample my carrots occasionally. Of course, the golems do a great job of that for me and they keep me on my toes. <laughs> anyway, yes. So I think the first part of this is going to be working with redstone and I'm going to take you through what I'm working on and I'll try and make it like I'm not like a genius when it comes to redstone or anything. My circuits are pretty sloppy, but it can at least take you through my thought process and my build process and try and make it um, friendly to watch. Um, speaking of friendly, we should probably block off this area a bit. That way June doesn't accidentally like wander into my construction zone. There we go. I've already started like hollowing out this area, so we have all of this to work with. Um, I just need to go get my redstone, put a project chest down here, and uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. I've got most of my stuff together, so I'm ready to get started. Before I do, let's just sort of talk through how I like view redstone. When you come up with a project, in this case, I want to go through the chimney and appear at the tree. It's helpful to just a know your goal like i just stated we're going through the chimney and going up the tree so that's the objective but then it's also helpful to break it down into like the easy to understand pieces so i envision like three to four different parts of how this project needs to work out i need a circuit that's going to open the chimney i also need a circuit that's going to close the chimney behind me i need a circuit that's going to get me up through the tree, and then I'm going to need a circuit that will allow me to come back down through the tree. So those are like the four major components, but we're going to take it like slowly. We're going to work on one step at a time. In this case, we're going to work on the chimney opening circuit, and I think also the chimney closing circuit because they're kind of one and the same. So chimney opening, I have removed the bucket of water. The bucket, it's already been filled in the time that I've explained that. Well, goodbye water. Um, <laughs> so let's open up this thing for a second, just to see what we're working with here and running over the fire. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to actually have to move the fire down one block. Um, if I don't, it's going to make this circuit way harder to accomplish. And, uh, I, I, I'm not about that today. <laughs> So we're going to move this down one. It does mean we won't see the blue flames as often, but we'll still get the smoke. We'll still get the whole chimney experience. We'll be okay. With the campfire moved down a block, 
I can move on to placing some pistons. Okay, well, that was a problem. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to take care of that first before that happens again. So the pistons are in place, and I've got the area a little bit more cleared out so that it looks a little bit more understandable. Now, let's get started with maybe the closing circuit. So this line of red terracotta with the redstone on it should be more than enough just to get these pistons to power when I give them an input. One of the pistons on this side is going to be responsible as well for helping close the circuit, whereas the rest of them will be responsible for opening the circuit. In this case, that's this guy right here. Speaking of redstone spaghetti, this gets really silly in a moment, but it's so that I don't accidentally cross wires. So we're coming all the way up here, just like that. <laughs> and this is what I mean, where it could probably be more compact and more efficient, but like, eh, if it gets the job done, then it gets the job done. so we don't cut the circuit here. This has to be a half slab. And now if we test this, yep, there's our closing circuit. <laughs> awesome! Now we can move on to the next part, which is actually just getting us up there. So I will immediately drop what I'm doing, and yep, there's the cat. Um, let's uh, let's get some food and tame the kitty cat. We need that for an advancement anyway, and it's a great break in between the redstone project. All right, I got some raw salmon. Saw the cat heading over this way last, so where are they? Oh, there they are. Well, you're kind of trapped in here now, so... Well, sorry you two. Just, just, uh, just trying to, trying to tame a kitty cat. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm sure I was interrupting some valuable uh, work time between the two of them. Yes. They are, they are totally just working. Okay, so we have the cat now. I mean, I know July has been pretty appreciative of the cats lately, so maybe we just bring this one over to her? Alright, July, I've brought you a... Uh, well, I brought you a cat. I didn't realize you had gotten a second cat. Do you have, do you have room for a third? Well, I take that as a yes. Okay, well... I guess you're now the owner of three cats. When did you get a second cat? All right, cat inside. And of course they are running off to the bed. As is the cat way. Well, it looks like we have a little bit of a cat mystery on our hands, but that will have to wait. I don't actually know if there's an explanation for it. I think July is just a uh, appreciator of cats. Uh, Ba ba back to the redstone. <laughs> okay, I have no idea if this is ready, but essentially here's what's going on back here. Although it's a little hard to make out, don't worry about it. Um, we have a sticky piston because I need to be flung directly upward, although ignore this block, it should move. 
if I've done this correctly. Um, yes. <laughs> um, all right, so we have a sticky piston. It should shoot us upward. That's what this green circuit is for. This is the we're getting out of here circuit. The yellow circuit that runs off in this direction and does all this stuff is actually for opening it when we're up there. So hopefully this all works. Oh yeah, look at that. It pushes you right out. So we have a d an additional piston up here to actually do the, the push out action. And then the whole circuit closes it back up behind itself. So we'll just get a, I have a birch button, so we'll just use that for now. Yep, that will get us down. Okay, so I made one more change to the circuit, but I believe I am all set and done. Now it should just require two button presses throughout the whole thing, no matter which direction you're heading in. So one to open it here. And then one to bop yourself back out. And you can see we have a nice, lovely wandering trader over there who sold me these cornflowers a moment ago. So thanks for that. They're enjoying our little garden that we made here, which is great. I'm glad someone's getting some use out of it. And then on the way back in. So the system down there should be closed. So if I press this button, Look at that, it will open for us. It does take a little bit, but it works. Uh, and then one to close it. Just like that. So that's pretty great, I love that. The one thing it's missing, if I'm being honest with myself, is a secret chime, like a, you know, like a a la Zelda, doo 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 doo, but you know, that will have to wait. Um, I've been at this for a bit, so I think I just need to take a break from the redstone and come back to that later. One more. One more time. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Now I can do that instead of doing what this golem is doing, which is just ruining my garden every time. Day out of Marchland's garden patch. Out. Okay, everyone. We're in the nether. That's what we're working on for the last part of today's episode. A few weeks ago, I got my first piece of ancient debris, and I am craving more of it. By the end of today's episode, I would love it if we could upgrade one of our lovely tools. So to that end, I've got myself prepared. I've got some fire resistance potions, which I will take momentarily. And we need to get ourselves to Y level 15 so we can start looking for ancient debris the fastest way I know how. Which is really just hitting everything with a pick. Oh, hello. No. No. Okay, Y level 15. That's got to be one of the worst staircases I've ever dug because I just kind of just went down. Uh, that's a problem for very much near future March, but uh, right now we're just gonna do what I do best, which is just do this. Ah, there we go. There's one. And our inventory is already super full. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Just a single piece this time, but that's okay. We need four to transform one of our tools into a netherite version of itself. It'll have more durability, it will be a little bit better. I am very excited. Uh, my two picks are very prime candidates for this treatment. My sword still isn't like fully optimized, I guess. Like it's not fully enchanted. So I'm not sure if I'll do my sword just yet. Is 
that noise was really loud. That terrified the heck out of me. But we found more ancient debris. So I guess I got off easy. Ooh, three. All that rhymed, didn't it? Huh. That's neat. Haha. -ha. Another piece. There we go. It's been a little bit. Well, I sure have dug a lot in pretty much most of these directions. Uh, I've managed to find 12 pieces so far. I was hoping to maybe get 16, although... Eh. 12 is great. 16 might have been a little greedy. At least for the first excursion. But that means that we can upgrade three tools or leave some in reserve. Either way, I now have to make it out of here, which, as I said, is uh, what's going to be Future March's problem. And I am now Future March. <laughs> that is how time works. So I think we're just going to head back to the village and uh, play with some netherite. Okay, ancient debris. We have to start by cooking it. Sorry, Copper, you gotta come out. A smithing table. I believe that's the one. Yep. That is right. Alright, so we got our 12 netherite scrap. And what we have to do is turn it into actual netherite and stop falling into holes. There we go. Now we have three netherite bricks. We plonk our thing in here. And it's gonna, like, it's gonna uh, mend it a little. Not too much, but a tiny bit. And I'll, I can just hang out in front of the XP farm to really finish mending all of my tools, like I do almost always between episodes. Um, so let's do it. Let's upgrade our two picks. They do the most work for us, so we might as well. And that leaves us with one netherite ingot left. And I know exactly, I know exactly what to do with that. <laughs> I made a netherite hoe. That's how I choose to spend the last netherite. We also needed it for the advancement anyway, which is serious dedication. Use a netherite ingot to upgrade a hoe and then re-evaluate your life choices. I don't know what they're talking about. Putting, Making a netherite hoe with unbreaking two that's, that's not a bad life choice. That's perfectly great. I'm never going to want for another hoe again. Probably. Maybe. And we'll tuck our new hoe away right here. For future keeping. After a full episode of making progress and all the work I've done in between episodes, it's nice to just sort of take a moment and relax and... Enjoy what you've done, and hang out in the areas that you've built. I'm looking forward to continuing to make this village even greater, working my way up the hill that way probably in the future. Maybe a little bit down the hill too, pretty much everywhere. I have so many plans for this place. It's ridiculous, <laughs> and I'm excited to actually get to show all that and share it with everyone. But for today, I think we are going to wrap it up. We already did a March's Kitchen Corner, so... Um, there's really nothing left to do other than just say goodbye. Uh, still trying this out, uh, during my intros and outros, so I don't know, I'll get a feel for it over the next week or two. But, everyone, I want to thank you all for watching, as always. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed yourself and that you found all this fun and relaxing, and I hope you join me next time. So until then, have a good one, and goodbye! Alright, June, listen. If you eat your mushroom stew, you're going to have a cookie, right? Keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind.